Hello booktube, it's Leah Cooper here and it is Tuesday which means I am bringing you another tag Tuesday. This week I am doing the guilty reader tag which I've also seen called I am a guilty reader tag. I was tagged by Jade over at Boho Bookworm to do this tag. I will leave a link to the original video down below as well as Jade's video. You should totally go check it out because hers is quite funny. And let's get started. Question number one, have you ever re-gifted a book? And I don't think I have because I don't gift books very often. I've probably given maybe like three or four books as gifts in my entire life and they all stand out pretty strongly in my memory as books that I bought new. I also have not necessarily been given a whole lot of books in my life. Again, I can only think of a couple, like three or four maybe. Two of them were duplicates, books that I already owned. I had one friend, former friend, who occasionally gave me books. And then she also gave me another book, which stands out in my mind so distinctly because I hated it. I, like, I legitimately tried to read it. It was the Friday Night Knitting Club. I used to knit a lot, and that's why she thought I would like it. And I tried so hard. I only got about halfway through that book and I DNF'd it. And that book in particular, I do know I sold back. Question number two is, have you ever said you've read a book when you haven't? In casual conversation to someone, no, I've never done that. In school, I have definitely done that. And it's funny because I've answered this question in another tag video, but I can't remember what tag it was. Irregardless, yes, I lied about reading all of uh, Huckleberry Finn. I only read maybe half of that book. I lied about reading Dante's Inferno, only read a couple parts of that book. I don't know if I read all of the Scarlet Letter or all of the Red Badge of Courage. In high school, I just remember being assigned several, just in my opinion, kind of garbage novels that I just, I do remember reading chapter summaries for. Question number three is, have you ever borrowed a book and not returned it? No, I've definitely borrowed or had someone like lend me like forcibly lend me a book and held on to it for a very very long time my brother-in-law has a bad habit of saying you should read this book and it's not necessarily a book i really want to read and he used to do it when i just didn't really read a whole lot because really it's only been in the past 18 months that I've started regularly reading books again. There's a couple that he lent me that definitely sat on my shelf or in a bag for a while. <laughs> I just unread, but I eventually gave them back. Now, conversely, have I lent books out that people have never returned? Yes, and I'm still angry and bitter about that, and which is why I, I no longer have, I have a policy of no longer lending people books. When it comes to the library, there were definitely books that it took me a very, very long time to return. There's probably a couple of books that I've had to pay for replacements for because I lost them. Though I feel like a lot of those, I found them again. For a long time, my library, they would charge late fees, but if you turned the book in eventually, then the late fee was redacted or withdrawn. You know, you didn't actually have to pay for it as long as eventually you returned the book. So when that was the policy, it definitely took me some a long time to return some books. However, I want to say around 2012, they stopped doing it. They changed their policy. They increased the fine, like the daily fine. And they did not forgive the fine if you turned in the book because I had a few fines I had to pay. After that happened, for a long time, I just stopped using my library altogether because I was really bad about reading things I checked out at all, let alone returning them on time. And it's only been in like 2017 that I've actually started using my library again. And I'm very, very particular about checking out things that I want to read, getting them read first, returning them on time, because I cannot afford library fines. <laughs> Question number four is, have you ever read a series out of order? Yes. Funny thing about children's series is a lot of times they get published out of chronological order because like an author will write an initial book, it'll become really popular, they'll write a couple of sequels, and then maybe they'll write some prequels, and things get muddy. So I have read The Chronicles of Narnia very out of order. The first book in that series I actually read was The Horse and His Boy. Then I can't remember if I read them in publication order or chronological order. I'm always a real stickler about reading things in chronological order, so I think that's how I eventually went back and read them. But initially I did read them totally out of order, any kind of order. And then I read the Redwall books, not in publication order, and not, it, I read them in kind of a, 
chronological order, sort of. I had a friend who really loved them and had read a lot of them. So I took her suggestion on what order to read them in. So I read a couple, like, I think I read Martin, I read Martin the Warrior first. And it's sort of a prequel. But there's actually another prequel to that. And I sort of read them in chronological order after that, which is very different the publication order. And then I've also read the Discworld books out of order. Like I read the second book in that series first, and then I read the first book, which I've talked about in numerous other videos, because I actually highly recommend doing that just because the second book, in my opinion, is funnier than the first book, even though they're kind of like a little duology in amongst themselves. And then I started reading that series in publication order. I, you don't have to by any stretch of the imagination, but that's kind of what I was doing. And then I got through maybe seven books in that order but I was buying them new so that's slow, that's very slow going and at some point I ended up picking up a couple of later books used so they were inexpensive. I know I, I checked out the Monstrous Regiment just totally randomly from the library once so I ended up reading later books very very out of order <laughs> but it is not my preferred reading method. I'm actually a huge stickler for reading things in order and that's why I won't touch some canons that are like too broad, too, too many, too many different threads, like comic books. I just can't do it because that is, that is a rabbit hole continuity that would drive me crazy. <laughs> Question number five. Have you ever spoiled a book for someone? Have I ever accidentally spoiled someone via one of my videos? I have no idea. No one's ever said that in the comments, but it's possible. Uh, I'm not necessarily a huge anti-spoiler person occasionally there will be something that'll be like eh don't don't tell me the twist at the end because a lot of times I like being surprised by the ending but like when it comes to the mechanics of the book I actually feel like having more information a lot of times is more enjoyable and I can make a better decision about what I want to read and I think this comes from reading a lot of fan fiction especially on archive of our own for instance where people put a lot of tags into describing what they've written so you know it's like it's got this trope and this trope can really make you know clear decisions about what you want to read so I really don't mind so much when people do that with books and so sometimes there are things that I might talk about or say or mention because to me they're not spoilers but other people may consider them spoilers but if I've done that I don't know. Question number six. Have you ever dog-eared a book? Probably when I was a kid but no, not really. I find it very inefficient because dog-eared pages can get undog-eared. And then question number seven, have you ever told someone you don't own a book when you do? Not intentionally. It's possible I've, I've said I didn't own something and then it turned out I did because I'm very bad at, about remembering what I do and don't own now. But I've never done it because I was like ashamed of owning a book. Question number eight, have you ever told someone you hadn't read a book when you have? No, because like even the quintessential like crappy books people are like ashamed to have read such as Twilight, Fifty Shades of Grey. A, I honestly haven't read them and for me those books usually come up in conversation as me saying I really tried to read these books because I want to understand why they're popular and why people like them and I couldn't do it. Like genuinely I tried to read both of those books and I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I got a little further in Twilight then I got bored. I just stopped reading it. Like I got to her first day at high school and that was as far as I could go. And Fifty Shades I got like two pages in and that was as far as I could go. So that's, I have a, I, I'm usually, I'm not usually, I am like always really upfront about the stuff that I read. Even kind of culturally terrible books. I'm very honest about having attempted to try to read them. Question number nine. Have you ever skipped a chapter or a section of a book? And again, I, I feel like I've answered a similar question and my answer then too was if there's a book with like a section or POV that I really 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 want to skip to the point where I'm like tempted to skip that's an indication that I should just DNF the book. There are occasionally books where I'm tempted. No no that's not the right way of putting it. It's not that I'm like tempted to skip or that I want to skip or that I do skip. There are occasionally books with multiple POVs where I'm just like not super interested in the POV. But as long as I'm like invested in reading the book and I want to get to the end, I'll read the POV. And it's a mark of a good book that takes a POV I'm not super interested in and turns it around so that I eventually become interested in it. And then the final question, question number 10, have you ever badmouthed a book you actually liked? Again, no. And this goes back to the, have you ever lied about reading a book that you've actually read? I, I'm very upfront and honest about what I read, 
what I like, what I think of it. And uh, I'm very, very blunt about the books that I don't like. <laughs> and I, I don't, what is the point of bad mouthing books that you like? I, I don't do that with movies either. If I like a movie, I like a movie. And usually I can tell you what it is about the movie that I like. Even if it's like, it's dumb, but it's funny. And it's funny and I like it, you know? Who cares what anyone else thinks? That's what I have to say about that. So that was the I'm a guilty reader tag. Am I a guilty reader? I don't know. I think it's kind of like 50-50. I don't actually know everyone who's done this tag or hasn't done it. I know a couple of people I, I watch have done it already. So I'm not going to tag anyone specifically, but if you were watching this and these questions sound fun, if you haven't done this tag, consider yourself tagged and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.